Welcome back to Coastal Compass, allegedly a podcast, and we have tonight Laura Wilson, who uh, is the advanced transmission, used to be, no longer. Former owner. So we're going to get into that right after this. So, Laura, you're from down here, right? Did you grow up here? Or? Well, didn't actually grow up here, uh, but I don't want to tell my age. Uh, oh, well, you don't but well, I'm not asking age. I'm we just were, asking, <laughs> where are you from? I was buddy? born and raised in 8 Mile, uh, part okay. of Pritchard. So, we moved over here probably 31 or 2 years or so ago. 94, yeah, so, 95? Well, actually, we moved over in 93, but we opened okay. the business in 94. Just recently sold it. We just sold and retired February the 21st. Y'all have zero desire to move anywhere else, or y'all staying here? Zero. And you know, it is kind of funny because people say, well, where y'all moving to? <laughs> and I'm like, uh, You're nowhere. Right what do you mean, where am I moving to? And they said, well, y'all going to move up to your house in the country? And I was like, no. <laughs> you, you know, you get away there, but this is home, you know? Yeah, yeah. This is God's country. This I wouldn't move anywhere else. I mean, you have everything here. So, no, absolutely not. But we do get asked that question a lot since we're retired. And uh, well, we see so many retirees, people moving down here. Right. Um, so see, we're already here. There you go. There you go. I guess there so. you go. Now, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be interested in. But never, never even crossed our minds to move. Okay. Uh, uh, and moving into retirement. That's what we're moving into. <laughs> are are you in Daphne or Spanish Fork? We're actually in Daphne. What are you finding the most fun about retirement right now? No stress. <laughs> is it really that <laughs> easy? Absolutely no stress. Well, honest to goodness, it is really that easy. Uh, now, let me say it. it is for me. My husband is still uh, helping with training some really young techs uh, that the new owners have and helping them, you know, transition a little bit further mechanically as far as the technicians go uh, but as far as my part I did my I guess you'd say my 90 days to help them transition over and move things over and you're done I, I was done that was it I was done so yeah it was that easy that's nice it was nice. really that easy are you a stay-at-home person or are you out going out and having fun on every night partying <laughs> no not partying every night uh we we travel, you know, quite okay. a bit, making plans. We're traveling a lot. We've got a, a trip. We're going to do some uh, glamping in North Carolina on the side of the mountain. Ooh, what time of yeah, year? Yeah, October. Nice. Oh, that would be beautiful. It, yeah, wouldn't it? But we found a, a glamping luxury place. You know, it's like a dome, and it's got uh, clear windows and ceiling, and it's going to be right at a meteor shower like it was just recently. That okay. We so are you going to be along the coast? in the Carolinas or more toward the mountains? Mountains. And so it's going to be really nice. And then we have a, a trip planned to Alaska to see the Northern Light. So we're just having a really good time, you know. And, and one thing, you know, when you work and your life is your business, you built that business in, from the ground up, yep. built the building, you know, everything, your family takes a back seat. You know, I mean, they just do because you're just working all the time. And as owners, you just get to work all you want. There's always something to do. Always. Always yep. something to do. And I am kind of was kind of a workaholic. People picked at me because I was a workaholic. And I loved it. We have been visiting family and friends that we haven't been able to visit with and have good quality time in years. So we're kind of starting off with the older aunts and uncles, you know, and things like that. And they're quite surprised when I call and say, hey, we've really enjoyed that the most is visiting family and friends. We're having fun. In the business, you did a lot of stuff on a national level as well. International yeah, level. Yeah, international level. Yeah, okay, yeah. international level. How'd you get involved in that? Well, to start over, my husband, he worked for his father. And his father owned a transmission business, so that's all he's done. Okay. I sold real estate with Roberts Brothers, and his mother got sick, and he asked me to come in and help, so I did. I was just wanting something more than your average automotive shop. Okay. You know, I, I wanted it to be clean and, and nice and a pleasant place to go to, like a dealership. 
you know, a dealership, you go and you have a level of expert, uh, expectation when you go into right. a dealership, you know. So I didn't want to be that nasty, greasy place. I didn't, I didn't want that, and he didn't either. That's what started it was to try to find an association or somewhere we could get assistance to help us to, to do that. And so we joined ATRA. ATRA, Automatic AT Transmission Rebuilders Association. Y'all were looking for an association that would give you resources or... Yep, that's it. On how Nailing. to have this... Well, resources, not just technically, but I may be jumping ahead, but okay. uh, an association that um, would help technically with new transmissions coming out. But when I joined ATRA became members, and then I got involved in the local chapter, which is for the Southwest, um, and then went on to the board of directors for the International Association. We started implementing management training. Okay. You know, so your most technicians came from their father and their grandfather, or whatever, you know, did automotive, and that's just what they did, and, you know, that's the way it was. So that's where they learned. When you have those, you don't have anything other than your little local four corner, you know, walls that you learn from. So we needed something more. We needed to advance more. Joining ATRA, technicians, they want to fix cars. They don't want to manage. They just want to fix cars. They want to fix cars on their own and run their own business. But some of them were not really good business people. And so that was a really big issue was that they were the best technicians in the world and could fix any transmission out there. But they just couldn't manage business very well. I encouraged ATRA, and I must say, the only female ever in 55 <laughs> years of the association. So that was quite interesting I to be a, part of, uh, be a part of that. But all the guys were very respectful, uh, implemented doing things like that. So there was quite a few changes with the association when I came on. The the guys, the other guys, they were the, each one had certain territories, and even Canada then their wives started coming with them, and the wives would come. And, of course, you know, my husband wasn't going to go and go shopping with all the women. So <laughs> he very seldom ever he came, he very seldom ever came to board meetings, which was at, mostly out in California at headquarters. So that's where the headquarters is. We've since, the board of directors has moved it to uh, Texas. A lot of board of directors are dropping in Texas. State laws there are much easier. Oh, California was horrible. I mean, just horrible. So we get that. Now, what's what's the deal with the lawsuit? The protest. The oh, protest. the protest. Okay. Yeah. Um, well. <sighs> You're not under a non-disclosed. Yeah. All right. So here's <laughs> no. the deal. Here's the thing. Uh, tell uh, us what the, the protest. protest is. So there is a... Um, in the transmission industry, there are not a lot of distributors to okay. buy your specific transmission parts internally. And most dealerships do not sell internal transmission parts. Um, and if they do, they're completely unaffordable. You, okay. you just couldn't afford them. So there was a particular distributor, which is the world's largest uh, and it was Transtar, and they were buying up all of the mom and pop, the distributors. Buying all the distributors, it was very difficult for competitive pricing because there wasn't any competition because they were buying them all up. I just decided that it was just, that just wasn't really good. Okay. And so what I did is I talked with someone at the FCC and and so we were going out to Washington, D.C. for our big expo training. And so, of course, the agent was going to meet me out there and wanted some of the other people that were supporting me, which supported me. I didn't ask for money. I just asked, could you give me this? I need this many copies. I need this. And pretty much got anything I wanted because they were wanting me to do something to help stop them. We went to Washington. And at the expo... I started passing out T-shirts and flyers. I was asked to leave, and they got real upset. So here comes the CEO and some other people, and they said, Laura, you just can't do this. And I was like, well, why not? And I said, well, I'm a member just like anybody else, you know. So right. they said, oh, you can't do that within the expo perimeter. And I was like, okay, well, show me the line. And they said, 
well, up the escalators, that's not a part of the expo. And I said, very well. So we took all of her stuff, went up the escalator, and started passing out again. That's awesome. <laughs> but then they called the hotel security. Mm-hmm. And I had spoke to an attorney, and he said, well, you know, you can't do that. You have to be out on the street or whatever. You can't. Here come the hotel police and tell us that we have to get out. It got really, really... I, did, I wasn't scared, but my husband was saying I needed to back off because I had gotten some threats. And I didn't take it as a serious threat, but well, ended up that they um, filed bankruptcy. Okay. Transtar did after buying all these little bitty distributors. Why? Well, I would like to say it was because of me, but really I think it was all a business thing. So they sold out and then, of course, just turned around and... You know, they're right back in and bigger Same than, people, different name, bigger company. Yeah. Well, it is interesting. Help it and determined that it was just not good, and it was truly not good. And I felt it, you know, I'm telling you guys, I felt it to my toes. It was just right. not right for what they were doing. A lot of small distributors that went out of business, and then some now they're coming back. So it's a good thing. But the FCC said that dealerships, and there were a couple of old, old companies your grandmother may have knew uh Uh, they considered that that was a source for us and so there was not a monopoly they had to find a way to back themselves out as well you know that they weren't forced but they did check into it you know and so a lot of people wanted to to step up and they wanted to fuss and when it came time to meet with the fcc agent all of them kind of disappeared. Right, right, right. <laughs> they just asked, like, well, hey, where are you guys? You know, you want me to get into this? I'm in it. So come on, let's go. Well, we're just going to support you behind the scenes. You know, we don't want to step up front. And I just thought that they had a monopoly. I still believed they had a monopoly, but, you know, FCC says no. So wow. I said, okay. When you're going out uh, for dinner, mm-hmm. where is the one place that you're going? So what is your favorite restaurant in town? I don't have a single one. <laughs> okay. All right. So it's but, but I do have quite a few. All right, let's get. Um love of course my daughter and my grandson work at the Dragonfly. Yeah. We absolutely. love that. I think everybody loves the Dragonfly. <laughs> everybody loves the Everybody loves Dragonfly. So good. Um and so I have to say that uh, my husband and I have have started since our retirement whole food plant based diet. So it, it's been quite interesting, and it's a good thing I'm retired because I'm in the kitchen twenty four seven pretty yep. much. We ate out almost every day, sometimes twice a day when we were in business. Yeah, because you don't I have didn't a lot have of time. time to right, do. right. Most places were closed by the time we would leave there. You know, I mean. The restaurants that we like, we love Cravers. California Dreamin's really good. You know, mm-hmm. as far as zip in, get something, zip out. Of course, the <clears throat> Ed Shed moving, that was really good. And then the Waterfront. Yep. We have just recently um, ate at the Waterfront. So, so now, because we're on this whole food plant-based diet, my husband has diabetes. We're trying to help to get him off some of his medications. And um, so we would go to these restaurants so much. I mean, people knew you. I mean, yep. oh, you know, yeah. oh, oh yeah. hey, y'all come on yeah, in. Yeah. Are you having your usual? You know, you want, you know, Master Joe's and then Daruma's and there's there's not really a particular one. We just we eat a, out a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but so are you a vegan now? Are you are you vegan well, or no? Not really vegan. Uh, we're just trying to make better choices, and I think that. I've heard it called a flexitarian. What that means is you mainly eat whole food, plant-based food, more, more, more vegetables. We don't eat any red meat or processed meat like sausages and lunch meats and hot dogs and stuff like that for sure. Uh, But we do eat some tuna and some salmon and uh, that's about it. I'm a huge fan of that of that style of diet. Mm-hmm. Um, really? Yeah, there's we're see, starting to see more and more uh, farms mm-hmm. in our area that are mm-hmm. catering more to... I guess I'd just say a cleaner, healthier choice is what we're trying yeah, to do. Yeah, something that hadn't and been blasted by Roundup some... for yes. days on end. <laughs> right. And not necessarily all organic, but most of the time the organic choice, just not as much processed food. But I could never do it if I was still working. If somebody's coming up to you and they want to start a business in this area, mm-hmm. 
What are some of the things you're going to tell them to do and to not do? To start a business, I would say that they need to make sure that they have some kind of support. There's a, I think it's with South Alabama, they have a uh, department of, oh, what's the name of that place? But it's a development center that they help to promote people that are going into business to keep the economy going. Oh, shucks. To have a support system, but these people talk on it. It's not the Small um, Business Administration. It's, no, it's something at the USA. But they do help you get uh, loans from okay. uh, a small business loan and that kind of thing. They do help with that. They help with the business plans. They help with, you know, going to the bank. They, okay. you know, they do all that. Even with research, they help you with research. And they actually have classes that you go to or training sessions that you go to to help you know what you need to do as far as filling out, uh, you know, your tax forms and how to get your taxes and how to get your EIN and uh, the, uh, um, we'll, we'll look it we'll, up. Yeah, it's we'll look it up and well, yeah, small we'll look it up and we'll have it in the uh, description. Description. Good. Absolutely. And I can send we'll it, it to you. If yeah, absolutely. That'd be great yeah. too. Yeah. But I would definitely say have some support. What about raising a family doing this? <laughs> well, let me say, y'all know my daughter, Amy. We do. And I think she has become such a wonderful, independent person because of business. I would but say it that. is very difficult to raise family. She had, goodness, she did homework uh, at the office. She slept across the seat of a truck, had birthday parties at the shop, Um they, they have no choice. They join in with the business with you, you know. When we first opened, I told Amy, I said, come on, we're going to go to Walmart. That's when it was in the old location on 98. Mm -hmm. We're going to Walmart, and we're going to put flyers on the windshields of cars. Of course, I'd go crazy now, and you'd be littering. But Yeah, you can't do that anymore. Yeah, and so she says, Mom, I am not doing that. No way. And I said, well, if you're going to eat, you're going to come on out here and do this. <laughs> That's for sure. But it is very difficult. Um uh, for families and we just had the one daughter and she adjusted well she learned to drive in the parking lot of the old location she drove customers uh cars as far as moving them out of the bay into the parking mm -hmm. lot kind of thing or moving them into the bay so she learned to drive different types of cars as well not on the road but different types of cars but yeah she is difficult with families to start a business but it's not that you can't you have to be prepared. So most of the time you're going to go into a business that you're already familiar with or yeah. you're working in or something. So that's very important because it's very difficult to get funds if you have no experience uh, or knowledge with that. And so you have to have some kind of knowledge as far as that goes with what kind of business that you're opening. You mm -hmm. better have some kind of funds on your own saved and prepared and ready because if you've never opened a business before to have that seed money, that mortgage company or SBA or whoever, you have to have you have to show them that you have that ability to control the funds. Right. Or you're going to be in a heap of trouble. So if I say save one time, I bet you I say save ten million times. And my dad, he was a Marine, and he always said, if you'd put that twenty-five dollars back a week one day, you'd have something. Well, I understand in his simplistic words that that is true. No, absolutely. I Every, mean, you it, have it adds to, up. And you have to put money back even as you're in business. Mm -hmm. To me, the secret to a early retirement is to save money. That's I mean, great that's, just, that's all there is. Yep. You just save money and you put that money into saving some way every week. Not just sometimes when you get a little here or there. Every week. And I promise you, you will have financial independence. I don't care who you are. Mm -hmm. I don't care what level you are because you're going to be at whatever level you are. Yep. Right? You can't spend to your level of income. You need to save to your level of income, you know, where most people spend. So you might be Michael Jackson and have millions and millions, but you can still go broke and not pay your taxes, right? Absolutely right. Because you live to that level of your income, yep. your comfort. But when you learn to save to that level, that's when you have financial independence. What do you think your biggest leap of faith when you went into business? Was it starting the business or other decisions in the business that you thought was the biggest 
leap of faith for you guys to to go in and, and start working? There's one thing in particular that I say was a leap. Uh, we opened in 1994. You know, there wasn't very, uh, transmissions were starting to get a little more complicated. Not until 1993 did you have pretty much all electronically controlled transmissions. So we didn't even see them yet, you see? Mm -hmm. So if Marvin's father was like, you're getting uh, a scan equipment. Son, what you wasting your money on that? That's just a fad. That's going to pass. <laughs> that'll, that'll pass, you know. Here we are with electric cars. You know? Right, right. Oh, that's just going to pass. You know, No, Dad, it's not going to. So, uh, so many things change so fast in the industry of automotive with transmissions. They had to change the transmission to save fuel. So the government pushed these automotive makers to keep, you know, getting a more energy efficient, more and more and more and more and more. So you had a three speed, then you had a four speed and five speed, six speed, seven. And it happened almost in a 10 to 15 year period that now you're up to a 10 speed, mm -hmm. you know, and it happened that quick to have the resources with the associations and things have really been a big deal. But I decided that we needed to move. We needed to make a change. So we were renting, actually, uh, at the, which is now Ace Hardware in Spanish Fort Shopping Center. Yeah. Um, and you go in there. We went in there. We could still see where the lifts, you know, they had the <laughs> in the ground lifts. We could kind of see where those still were. But we, I said, we have to. We cannot keep renting. We have to put that money into a building because it's going to be our retirement. We took a leap of faith and took a class. And then... That was a big deal. We took a class, and it was $10,000. That was big money. I, I mean, can imagine it. Really, a really. A class. An educational class. Educational management class. And it was just, you know, we just couldn't believe. So I was like, oh, my gosh, this, is, this costs so much money. And my husband said, well, we're going to have to put it on a credit card. And I was like, a credit card? You know, oh, yeah. No, no, no. That's a big no-no. Well, we took the class, and, and here I'm going to say something that we may or may not edit out, okay? So okay. if you hear beep <laughs> okay. in this broadcast, you'll know beep. Maybe it was a good idea. So we took the class, and it was called Management Success. And I don't even think Management Success is still out there right now. But when we went to the class, we went out to Glendale, California, and we went out there. Now, this, is, this class is, you know, a year long. Right. Oh, wow. But you had to go to Glendale at one point. So I went out there and I was like, man, this is great. This is so good. And I started implementing it. Well, I didn't know who L. Ron Hubbard was. Oh. All I knew is L. Ron Hubbard was one smart man. Look at this business man. He's got the business mind. Well, coming from a Southern Baptist <laughs> family. Right. I found out who L. Ron Hubbard was. Right? Yes. Yes. So uh, I called my Science brother. Science fiction writer. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So I called my brother and I, and I said, oh, my gosh, I got into this class. And, and oh, my gosh. And he said, Laura, is that that class you told me was so good? And I was like, yes, yes, yes. And he says, well, just don't drink the blue stuff. Well, he was laughing. <laughs> of he, course, has a doctor, of course. he has a degree in religion. So, you know, he was just teasing me and don't yeah, yeah. drink the blue stuff. That was our leap of faith was that class. Now, and then from then on, we were always in some kind of management training. And okay. for all business people, you know, you have to reach outside your four walls or you're not going to move, you're not going to expand, you're not going to increase until you get out of your own head and see what other people are doing. We made them fit what we needed. Sure. But we learned from those classes of what to do. So I either had a consultant uh, almost all the time or I was in some type of training class to keep improving our business and to keep up with what was going on. Got to continue learning or somebody's going to pass you by. You have to. Well, you got to get caught up, up first. That's, that's <laughs> true. I mean, that's true. That's true. And a lot of small businesses, small town, small business, they're so far behind. Oh, Especially yeah. if it was family owned. They're so that's far exactly behind. Right. And when they show up to a, a state mm -hmm. or a na especially a national meeting or an mm -hmm. international meeting and they realize how far behind they are, mm -hmm. then it's, 
to watch them take off is kind of fun. I mean, it's but it's an exponential. And you know, and the other taking. thing about that too is, is when you do learn these other steps, it, it can be overwhelming, and you can't implement it all at the same time. And like you said, you made it work for your business, and you right. you we implemented changed. what you had to do. We went to Rhode Island to a class. We flew back with the instructor. I wouldn't even speak to the man. It was the worst class I ever been to. He was having some personal problems, and he'd come in late, and then we took a two-hour lunch, and then we left early, left early, and I was like, wait a minute. Well, we went to lunch with some of the other people that were in there, and they shared with us something that they did at their business. That was the best thing we had ever <laughs> heard. That one thing, you know, and this was from just some of the students that were in there that you were learning and networking with when you were taking it. And I tell you, as far as the instruction of the class was terrible, but what we brought back from that, you know, and you have to look for things. You can't just go in there and think somebody's going to pour something over in there. Right. And some of those things and some of those ideas, you just take them as your own and and yeah, absolutely. Them, you know, I mean, you. some of the best things around when you go to those national meetings are the, is lunch and sitting right. down at those big tables mm -hmm. with people in the industry, but they're mm -hmm. in different parts of the Rubberized area. Rubberized chicken, and you're talking to people. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> and we did. Um, now, I, we handled the local training. You know, so we flew technicians in, and we always were at um, what I call the boats in Biloxi, because we had better attendance there with technicians there. Uh, right. Or a drink or anything like that. Right. You know, you go for the training, you know. It's the easiest thing to see. Um, what I find funny is whenever I go to New Orleans, if I want to see people from Alabama, I go to Bourbon Street mm -hmm. and watch all the people <laughs> from Alabama. <laughs> and there's the, the, a roll tie. The, oh, easy now. <laughs> <laughs> I did not. Oh, that in any way. Uh -huh. okay. Now we know where we stand. Yeah, we know. <laughs> oh, now, okay. I got okay, you. I got now you. I know. <laughs> I only watch basketball. <laughs> oh, dang. That is classic. Classic. That, that, that uh, needs to be on that, loop. That, 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 that stays in. It's going to be because it's a short, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Well, look, thank you for your time. Thank you for coming oh, on. Thank you. Uh, absolutely loved it. It's been fun. I've there really you go. enjoyed That's this. That's what we want to hear. I, I hope that it may have helped someone, though I may not be in business currently. We were in business an awfully long time, 30 years almost. But I hope that it helped someone. Um, and of course, if anyone has any questions, I'll be glad to answer best I can. Anyway, there you it's go. my own and you, personal and you experience. Can, absolutely, you can contact us through the, the, the uh, description in the bottom, and yeah. we can get them to Laura, and she Perfect. would definitely help you out. And, and and you know, and that's one of the things that we, that's we want to do is we want to help businesses around town. We want to have a fun time networking and a fun time getting this content mm -hmm. out. And we just do appreciate you coming on and hanging well, out thank with us. Y'all, absolutely. I'm, All right, Jason. Real special. So, what do you do to pay the pay the bills? Absolutely. So, please, if uh, please like this and uh, subscribe and uh, let us know what kind of content you want. If you want to be a part of the uh, podcast, you're welcome to. We had a, a group reach out to us just today, asking to be on here, and we're getting that set up too. So, for you guys, we do appreciate your time watching, and we want you to. Keep it up, and this is Coastal Compass, allegedly a podcast. <laughs>